uh, obviously it's a it's a great day to to be a Nittany Lion. Um, I was just at the hub and I did uh, Thon 100 Days Out, and the energy and the excitement that those students have is just unbelievable. So I was so uh, thrilled to be a part of that. And then um, obviously the season's about to to kick off, and uh, I really like this team. I'm enjoying the connection that I have with them and that they have with each other. And then um, obviously being able to sign um, Russ here and, and Miles and get that in. You know, there's paperwork and things that has to get done before you can uh, talk about the, the two recruits. But couldn't be more thrilled and excited about them. I mean, they check all the boxes as far as competition, as far as winner. I mean, Miles Dres, I feel like, has been committed for 10 years. Um, and the fact, his loyalty, his work ethic, his commitment to Penn State through the good and the bad, just unbelievable. It's unheard of in this day and age. And I let his dad know that, and I let him know that today as well, and how proud we were that he was coming to Penn State. And, and the same thing with uh, Ross Sierra, a winner, a, a competitor. Um, those two had played together as, as uh, youngsters on an AAU team. Um, and we, we filled uh, a, a, lot of, uh, it's a lot of good pieces right there, what they're going to bring, intangibles that they're going to bring to our team. Uh, academically, they're off the charts as well. They can shoot the basketball, they can dribble, they can pass, and, and they're flat-out winners, if I haven't said that enough. They're winners, and, and it's always good to get winners in your um, in your program. And then obviously what Rose just said, you know, that's five years in a row, 100% graduation success rate. We're 22 above, 22 points above the, the national average, and we're tied in the Big Ten at number one. So we're, we're doing a lot of good things here, you know. The next thing is is the record. You know, the next thing's the record for us, and I think that's coming this year. Right, Mark, give us a little scouting report on both players, like what they bring X's and O's. We, we understand the, yeah. the, the intangibles you're talking yeah. about. Yeah, Miles can play one through four. He's that tough. Um, when we first started recruiting, he was playing small forward. Uh, lost the, lost some weight, got in shape, changed his body. Uh, he was always a, a very good shooter. That was absolutely the case. Um, really has a high IQ. Um, if you're able to see any of his uh, highlights or watch any of the videos, Peach Tam, um, he's a winner. He takes charges. He rebounds the basketball. He makes plays off a ball screen. He can set the ball screen. I mean, he, he does a lot of winning things for, uh, for your team, and, and he's a leader. Um, he, he's not afraid to get in his teammates' faces. He's not afraid to put himself out there, and, and that's the thing that you love about him. And then Rossier, I, I think, is, it was huge because now you got a point guard who can play one and two. Uh, he can play both positions. Another very, very good shooter, uh, really good off a ball screen, uh, high IQ, competitive, competitive level off the charts. Uh, he played for, for a really good AAU program and team loaded, and he's playing down at Massanutten right now, and they're competing at a high level. It's a different stage, and he's got to go against the best. Um, and the one thing that I asked him to do is really work on being more vocal and leading, and he's done that. I mean, he's been the loudest guy in the gym, positive or negative. Um, so I think we're bringing two guys in or, who are ready to keep this program on a high level. You don't see a lot of uh, decommitments in college basketball as opposed to football, which yeah. is all the time. Yeah. Well, why is that? It, you know what? It's there. I, I've seen, uh, obviously, what's going on out there right now, you see more decommitments than ever. But I know what you're saying. In the past, you might not see it as much. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I don't coach football, so I don't know. You know, if, if Miles had called me and said, I'm going to go on a visit to wherever, I would be like, uh, I, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, um, but I don't know how football handles that. I haven't talked to James. I've talked to James about a lot of things. But that's one thing I haven't talked to him about. When you look at, at the team you've got in front of you, uh, as far as Tony's concerned, what's the conversation you have with him about how you want him to play? Because some of his best basketball in terms of optically has been when he's go goes, I'm gonna score eight straight points at the end of some of these games. Yeah. But that's he's not necessarily wired to be that guy first. Yeah. Um, but he might be your most capable scorer in that regard. How do you kinda talk him through how you want him to balance those two things? I, I think he's got such a high IQ and he's really intelligent. Um, he he really knows when when it's his turn and when to, you know, feed everybody else. Uh, he went for 24-23, and I think he just had 11 against Bloomsburg. I didn't play him much in that exhibition game. Um, but I, I think he has a good understanding. I mean, he had seven assists, zero turnovers. I mean, so he, he knows when there's a hot hand out there. You know, Shep went for six for 10. 
on uh, Saturday. So he, he has a great understanding of his teammates. And that's what I was talking about. Uh, you look forward to seeing the development, right? We saw, we know what happened last year. We saw them. And then to see their bodies now and how they've changed and the connection in the locker room, the connection that we all have together, you look forward to Friday night to, to see that team start to really mature and show what they're capable of doing. And I think that's what Tony is now doing for us. He understands it's my time. i got to look for a shot. I'm going to get a shot. But if Shep's got it going, Lamar's got it going, and we got to feed the big man, he's going to do that. You yeah. mentioned that connection, you know, obviously not being right with them in the locker room. How does that kind of show up to you and the rest of the staff in practices and in the exhibitions? And, you know, how do you, how do you know it's there? Well, it, it shows up in a lot of different ways. So they dap or high five. Uh, there's a lot of touching you know and I think that's always important um, but like on the bus ride right you hear laughing you hear bantering um, when you're doing right before you come in to film a film session you can hear them laughing joking having a good time uh, guys are picking each other up we always do that but there's something more to that now um, they're, they're not leaving the locker room they're not leaving the gym ASAP when it's when you know when practice is over they're hanging out they're spending quality time together. So when you notice those things, um, you know there's a, a pretty good connection out there. And they different? want each other to succeed. Sometimes it's not to the level you need it to be. And that, that equals trust. We're all trying to build trust. We're all trying to get to the point where they trust each other, where the rotation's gonna be, where I'm gonna kick out for a three and I, I trust that you're gonna make the shot. Is that different than what you've had or seen from teams in the past? Uh, the connection is probably better than it's ever been. Do you expect to have Mike and can you let us know what? Going yeah, on so here? I had that written down. I apologize. Yeah. He, he's he's working hard. He's doing everything we we need him to do. He's closer and closer to to being back. So I'm hopeful he'll be back this weekend. And I just want to be clear: is it a physical thing or is it something else? It's in house. Okay. In house. I have to ask you. Yeah, no, no question, right. no question. And I need to be more clear. So it goes both ways. Yeah, when if people follow and they, they ask. So yeah. if we don't ask, we don't look. Yeah, they're gonna get they're gonna get tweeted at. Yeah. What's, uh, <laughs> do you have any updates on like Julian's percentage wise? Yeah. And also, is, is Lamar 100 percent? Lamar's definitely not 100 percent, but he's been playing. He's been going. I thought he showed some positive minutes on Sunday, which I wasn't expecting because he played Saturday with that ankle, uh, but he looked pretty good. He looked pretty fresh, and he had a good day yesterday. Um, I held Julian out yesterday, so Julian's probably like 75, 80 percent. Um, so I'm going to be really intelligent with him, try to keep his minutes at a certain level, set him out of practice when I need to. But um, he, he's, he's produced. Um, the close scrimmage he produced, uh, Lafayette, did a great job in the second half, um, statistically-wise for us, maybe not the box score. So our attitude points and things of that nature. And then is, is Lamar, is that a situation that has an end date to it where you feel like he will be, you know, does it nag forever, just the nature of that injury? Well, we, we have game, what, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, Friday? So it's going to it's gonna fester a little bit here. Uh, I, I told him. And you have to be You're a basketball conscious. player, so you're going to be sore, or hurt, or, or, you know, dinged up for the next 15 years of your life. So you better learn how to play with it. How and he very mature. Very mature. He's coming in at least once, sometimes twice a day to get treatment, so he's ready to go. You've been pretty proactive about outside noise control in the past in terms of sometimes Twitter has died and come back a few times <laughs> over the past <laughs> uh, few years. Do you have to be proactive in a year like this where there's going to be a lot of noise in either direction? And some of these guys, I mean, I think he's Tony's already sort of has that perception about him that Maybe he won't be here all four years if he tries to go to the league or something like that. And it's awfully early in his career to know that for sure. But just in general, I mean, how do you kind of manage that? Yeah, it's something that we talk about, limiting your distractions. Uh, I'm not taking away Twitter or anything like that. It's really a part of who they are and, you know, they're a society, really. Um, but we're just constantly talking about, you know, limit the noise, limit the distractions, focus on here and now, stay present has been something I've been trying to drive home, not looking ahead, not looking at, well, if I have a good year this year and, you know, we have whatever amount of wins that I could possibly go. No, no, no. Stay right here, right now. Let's get better today. And like, like I said in, in the first press conference, March will take care of itself if we take care of it today. So let's focus on that. Let's get better today. I think the same thing for Mike. Uh, I think Mike is that caliber of player. 
that we, we just have to constantly work with him about staying present, staying here, and don't let the outside distract you from the task at hand. Pat, could you uh, give an explanation for the early tip-off? I, I think I know why, but I'd like to hear in, in your words why you guys... Well, there's a, I would go back to the same scheduling issues, number one. Yeah. You know, with the Big Ten having no, that, that weekend, we were not supposed to play on this Friday night. Okay. Um, so the, the Lady Lions play at 7. There's a homecoming parade, and we didn't want to play Saturday with the football team playing, and we already had Sunday locked up, and we were really looking to go away. I was looking to start on the road, and it just worked this. It just worked out this way, and they accepted four o'clock, and Campbell's accepted uh, four o'clock, even though they're part of that tournament. You know, it just worked out for us. And to do it on part of a home football weekend, what is that kind of? Yeah, I think it's going to be awesome. I think I'm, I'm hoping people get up here early. I'm hoping there's going to be excitement out on this campus. I know that there will be, especially for homecoming and the game. Um, you know, get the get the football team back on track. Um, I, I think it's going to be great. I hope, I hope you know fans come out and support us. What are you looking for this first weekend from kind of just the development of the, of the group as a team and kind of what you'd like to see these first two? Yeah, uh, right. I'm. I want to see us play hard. I want to see us compete. You know, we're, we're, we're exactly where we're supposed to be. We, we have some really good eight-minute to ten-minute stretches, and then we have a couple, like, hmm, got to clean that up before we get to the Big Ten, or, or, or now the first weekend in December. So I, I want to see us compete uh, as hard as we can for as long as we can um, instead of going in spurts. We, we need to be consistent throughout the 40-minute game. Does that change anything with the early Big Ten start as far as how quickly you need to see the guys get ready yeah, for that? You know, it, 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 the only thing that changed was our schedule, you know, the compressed part of the schedule. Uh, but I, I'm not going to change anything now because typically you have high major games in there somewhere. Um, so we're just going to prepare like we've always prepared and get them ready to compete at a high level. What do you expect to see from uh, Shep this year as far as shooting the three? I mean, we've seen him be in that 34 <coughs> to 36 range, but this year in the preseason, he's shot really, really well. Do you expect him to take another leap this year? I, I do. I expect, uh, I don't want to put a number on it, but I expect Shep to really shoot lights out this year. And I, I expect his leadership to be unbelievable. He has shown that over the last two weeks. Um, I also want to see him get to the free throw line a little bit more because people are going to just sit on him outside the three. I'd like to see him mix up his game a little bit, back cut a little bit, do some different things. Don't be afraid to take a two, um, and he's doing that. Defensively, he, he's gotten much better, and he understands that we're going to need him in at the end of games. He's got to defend. He's got to rebound. But right now, he's he's given us what a senior should be giving us. You brought Coach Ferry on board this offseason. What do you want to see at? What do you want to see out of him? But he has shoot the three yeah. well or something like that. But he like, was a great shooter back in the day. So, <laughs> um, but but what is his game day responsibility? I mean, how do you want to utilize sort of his background when it comes to? So what 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 we did was um, I provided him our playbook, and then we sit down and we go over wrinkles. Um, and it's ironic he's running similar sets at LIU and Duquesne that we're running here. So that was easy transition for us. Um, so game day, him and I meet um, the day before the game or the day of the game um, for the scrimmages been the day before. And we go over what we think will be effective versus the defenses that the opponent plays. Um, I've given him the freedoms to make calls, um, but we're on the same page as far as what we want to do, the game plan that we have, how we're going to start the game, what's working, what's not working at halftime. That's what we've been doing. What, what looks good, what doesn't look good, what do we need to talk about to the team before we go out and adjustments. So, so far, I think it's going really, really well. Is that an adjustment for you? Because unless I'm mistaken, you've called plays exclusively the past. Um, I, I probably called plays 75% of the time over the last two years. Um, and this year, I expect to, you know, it might be a little bit less, but if we're on the same page and we, we sit down together and put our heads together and we come up with a game plan, they'll be around the same. Pat, so an interesting as aspect of this team, I feel like, is that Philly connection, Roman Catholic connection. So I just am curious, how does that impact the chemistry on the team? Do you find that that helps to kind of bring a core group of guys to the team, or does it maybe take a while for other guys to kind of feel like they can be able to embrace yeah. that? Yeah, that's another part of the, what we were talking about, the connection. Um, I think they're doing a great job of just not them. 
you know, it's just not them all the time. They're bringing in Jamari, they're bringing in John and Trent, and they're making sure they hang out with everybody because I think clicks can really, really take a team down, especially a locker room. So we want to avoid clicks at all costs. And it's something, again, that we talk about. Hey, when you're when we're at the uh, training table or whatever, make sure you sit and, you know, we, we break this up. But they're doing it on their own now. So as long as they're, you know, focused on taking care of one through 14, that way you got that connection. And do you feel like Shep helps out with that, being more of a leader this year, obviously, kind of to make sure that everyone is embraced? Yeah, Shep, like I said, Shep is doing a really good job of bringing these guys together and not fearing, you know, if he's got to get on somebody, not worrying about the consequences, not worrying about, oh, he's not going to like me. You know, this is in between the line stuff. So I think he understands that now when you're 22 years old, like, you know what? This is my last go around. This is the way it's got to be. And this is what, you know, other great leaders did for me. So I need to pass that down. What's the uh, biggest challenge that you feel your team needs to overcome in order to get to where you want them to be? I, I just think consistency. You know, we're, we're the same team that beat Michigan State, and we're the same team that beat Maryland, and the same team that beat Minnesota, same team that beat Georgia Tech. You know, we had some really, really great wins. But can we be consistent the next night? Great win. We're going to play that way the next night. Um, that, that's what I'm looking for. We just scored 102. We just scored 80-something. Um, we're scoring the basketball again. We're right up about our 70 uh, possession, possession per game where, where I want us to be. But now it's about the consistency on the other end, the defending, the rebounding, the approach. I've been calling it mental conditioning. We need to have the mental conditioning to come back and compete at the same, the same level or higher. And that's what we're working on. Uh, Coach, Jamari played a lot of minutes in the first exhibition games. What are you kind of expecting from him at the beginning of the uh, I'm expecting right around that uh, 15, anywhere from 15 to 22, 23, uh, depending on foul trouble. I know it's kind of a funny number to throw out there, but you know that's what I'm looking for out of him. His pace that he brings to the game is outstanding. His um, competitiveness is off the charts. Um, the speed of which he, which he plays with is, is exactly what we need. It's a good change from Tony to Jamari. And then the way he defends, and he just I'm letting him pick up as, as far as he wants because he just gets in the point guard. He's going to turn him. He's going to really make him work. And instead of playing our pressure defense or three-quarter court press there, he's doing it on his own because he knows he's got those 15 to you know 20-some so, some minutes to, to get it done. And, uh, and then he's got to run the offense for us. So, you know, foul trouble, and I want to slide Tony to the two. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're good minutes for him as a freshman. So that's pretty, pretty important. The mental conditioning idea, what are yeah. some ways you go about uh, working on that with the guys? <laughs> um, in practice, you know, uh, they think practice is over and do one more drill. In practice, uh, doing a shooting drill, it's got to be crisp and clean. Uh, same thing in practice, maybe doing a five on all thing, keeping score, loser runs, things of that nature. Um, and I keep talking about mental conditioning, mental conditioning. The charity event, I thought, came at a great time uh, to do that for Hurricane Relief was awesome. And, and Lafayette did a wonderful job of welcoming us uh, uh, down there. But, you know, it turned out to be a mental condition for us, too, because we're able to play a back-to-back. We're going to play a back-to-back in New York uh, when we, we play Pitt and wherever we're going to play the next night. Uh, so, so far, I didn't like our back-to-backs last year. So I've been really talking to them about back-to-backs, four and eight, mental conditioning part of it. You know, got to get up the next day and compete the same way, as hard as we can. And when you talk about mental conditioning, what plays a bigger factor? What your players are doing here at practice or kind of how they handle themselves once they walk out of here and have to deal with all the elements that college kids do? Well, it's, it's, it's definitely about sacrifice. And, it's you know, we have our whoops, right? So it's definitely, you know, get that eight to ten hours sleep. We need your rest. Get in here and see the trainer, you know, if you're cold and hot tubs and, and icing, whatever you need. Um, that sacrifice that, that not a lot of people know behind the scenes that these kids are doing to get in here. Uh, they're not going, you know, hopefully they're not going out and they're doing, they're making good choices and then they got to come in here and stay fresh so they can perform at a high level. And as a coach, do you find that's when senior leadership or veteran leadership comes into play more so that, you know, Shep and those guys can help the younger guys adjust to that? Yeah, no, no doubt. But you know what? I think our younger guys are very mature. Our sophomores are very, very mature. And our freshmen came in more prepared than any class we've ever had as far as conditioning, as far as being tough as far as lifting in the weights. They came in really prepared. Uh, I think Jamari might be the fourth strongest on the bench. Think about that. He's six foot. 
I mean, it's really impressive. And you know about John and his football background and, and Trent. I mean, it's just, it's impressive what those guys do. So I think we keep talking about routine of greatness, and they have to stick to that routine so they can perform at a high level. Well, in, in the classroom and on the court, really, they go hand in hand. Did I say we have 100% graduation success rate? I don't know if I said that. All right, go ahead. Sorry. Have you started game for, for Friday? Um, I've been sprinkling in some things here and there. You know. What do you guys, what's the scout? They, they got a great player, um, fantastic player, who was the second leading scorer in Division One last year at 25 a game. From what I'm hearing, he's averaging 40 <laughs> in his exhibition and scrimmages. Um, I've watched some tape already on him, and he's he's a dynamic player. He's like an Allen Iverson, but probably a better outside shooter. Uh, he can really score the basketball. So it's got to be five against the ball. This isn't Nas or Josh or Jamari versus him. This is five against, you know, it's Penn State basketball versus what Campbell does. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about him. They got shooters all over the place. Uh, I like their big man. He's really bouncy. Uh, blocked 70 shots last year. So they, they're a good team. They got a good team. And, and Kevin's a very good coach. I've known him for a long time. Um, so, you know, we're going to, it's, it's a great opener because we're going to be challenged. Thanks, guys. See you Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.